Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to part two of my trip from Florida to Houston, Texas. This is the beginning of day five where I start uh, going into, right here is the entrance to ICW in Louisiana. It's about uh, 10 miles or so before I hit the city of New Orleans. Definitely in Louisiana, alligator right there in front of me. Large on this side. Well, the sun's coming up on day six. See it there. A little sunrise. Um, I'm about 40 miles south of New Orleans in the swamp. And uh, it is nothing but swamp. Airboats keep flying by. Um, a lot of a lot of guys out here trawling, fishing with their uh, crab pots or whatever they're fishing for. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna make my way south toward uh, ultimately in the direction of Lake Charles. There's several other towns between here and there, but uh, I just went through New Orleans yesterday on day five and uh, made it here about i guess about 40 miles south of new orleans on the icw so um anyway i'm gonna get started i gotta fill up with diesel i'm uh i'm filling up with jerry cans right now so i gotta find a, a marina somewhere to uh to refuel uh also um i'm just showering on the boat I'm running out of food so I gotta find somewhere to to buy some food um, it's not really that glamorous I can tell you that but uh, I'm making my way through so the end of day seven and uh, really uh, stopped and got some water and I uh, tried to get fuel but the guy closed at three o'clock and I got there at four uh, so I'm trying to make it to a, um, a fuel dock 
about 15 miles ahead, so we're not going to get there until about 9.30. Try to uh, push on through the canal at night. Um, anyway, I'll just anchor there in front of his uh, gill dock. And uh, he opens at 7 in the morning. That is about 20 miles south of uh, Lake Charles. And hopefully tomorrow I'll make it through Lake Charles into uh, close to Orange, Texas, uh, which is uh, right on the state line of Mississippi, state line of Louisiana and Texas. Uh, day six, I was just, uh, just motored all day, I anchored at Morgan City, and um, ordered Wendy's, had an uh, Uber, Uber Eats bring it out to me, which was a disaster. I'll never do Super Eats again. Anyway, the sun, the sun just set. Just trying to make it, make it down this wooded, creepy canal. along the ICW except for tugboat, tugboat uh, fueling stations. Good to be back in Texas.
right, so I made it here to uh, Kima, Texas, and um, it took me 11 days. Uh, the last portion through Louisiana was absolutely horrendous. I, um, I got here in the middle of the night. I had to navigate through uh, Galveston Bay in the middle of the night, and um, that in itself was, uh, was pretty challenging. Had uh, several cargo ships coming out and in, uh, and then had to find my way through a winding access to get here to the marina. And um, so I'm here in the marina, like I said, uh, 11 days, and I'm glad it's over. I've cleaned up the boat this morning, uh, pressure washed it, cleaned everything up, and um, ready to uh, get back on the San Juan 24 to finish that up. But So I'm gonna leave this one here hit this marina for a little while but as soon as I can I'm gonna take the mast down and um, get this ready to do some repair on so really the mast shouldn't be up uh, with the uh, mast step and the condition it is um, I'll tell you a little story about some of my trip through Louisiana I didn't film a lot of it so um, I think it was my second night in Louisiana and I'm deep south in the swamp and uh, the thing about going through the ICW in Louisiana is there's so many trails or canals going in multiple different directions. So you really have to study uh, to find out which way to go. And uh, Navionics is not that clear. The thing about going through Louisiana is there's no marinas. There's nowhere to stop for fuel. There's absolutely nothing but tugboats and alligators. That's it. I mean, there's occasional place where you can, uh, if you're if you want 200 gallons of diesel, you know they'll sell it to you, or maybe a thousand gallons. Uh, but 20 gallons, they laugh at you. So um, anyway, I made it to uh, I can't remember the name of the town. It starts with M, but um, I got to this little anchorage. It was dark, and uh, it's kind of in a little cove, a little boat dock and there's a city about two miles away so uh, I pulled off in there and it's just a small little I would say three square blocks of a little area little cove with a boat ramp for uh, local people want to put their uh, fishing boats in or whatever I got on the phone tried to find a place to get me some food because it was already out you know uh, just very little food um, I was able to find a DoorDash that would go to um, Wendy's and bring me some food. So I ordered that and um, she called me before she got here and said, look, I'm not, I just realized what area you're in. I'm not going down there. People die down there. I'm not, I'm not going down there. So, all right, all right, I'll, uh, I'll walk out of here and um, I'll row to shore, walk out of here and you know meet you somewhere close so I get my dinghy I don't have the outboard on it and it's about a block from my boat to this boat ramp with a street light out there and um, just a tiny street light so you can't see anything but I have a flashlight so I shine into water and all I can see is orange eyes everywhere I mean there's there's brush I mean just everywhere is these orange eyes I know it's alligators well, um, but there's none around the boat, you know, between here and there. So they're closer to, uh, closer to shore. So, um, anyway, I get in my little rowboat, I row to shore and I have to step out in the water and everything and, uh, to pull my boat up on the little boat ramp and I'm walking up this boat ramp and all of a sudden this woman kind of appears out of nowhere. She was, you know, and I've heard stories about voodoo and everything and in uh, Louisiana. So, you know kind of a little jumpy anyway but um, she just peers out of nowhere and uh, she's standing there and she's uh, like uh, just hey what are you doing you know and no oh, nothing I've just got to meet this lady up here to uh, to get some DoorDash or uh, she's bringing me some some food for Wendy's and uh, and I'm trying to get my bearings and everything she goes well the roads that way you know and so I uh, I walk off and she's walking with me and uh, she was really nice, but spooky nonetheless. But anyway, uh, so 
I go over this levee and there's a lady and uh, that's bringing me my food and she's like man I would not be down here for long you know people die down here uh, just you know I would get out of here and so I grab my food and I say all right thank you and uh, as I'm walking back over the levee that spooky lady is with me and she I'm like what is that all about is people die down here and she goes well she's talking about the gators <laughs> what do you mean the gators she goes yeah they, there's some monster gators right here uh, right here in this water and they hang out around this boat ramp that I've got my dinghy parked at so you know now I'm a little a little terrified so uh, she's just standing there watching me and she goes all right see you later she goes I'm out of here good luck I said wait a minute you need to watch and make sure I get to the boat in case uh, somebody needs to call 911 or something, you know, because she spent the last five minutes spooking me out, telling me all about the monster gators that they've seen here recently right there, you know, and the attacks and, you know. But um, anyway, she just basically keeps on walking. Well, I'm absolutely terrified at that point. So I get in my dinghy and I, at this point, I get in it on dry land. And I'm using the oars trying to push it back in the water because I'm not putting foot in the water. It's completely dark, you know, and the flashlight I have, you have to hold it to turn it on. And as soon as you, if you let go to set it down, it goes off, but, uh, so I can't do both and it's completely black. And uh, so I'm using the oars to try to push this boat back in the water. And I got my drink between my legs and occasionally I grab the light to look, you know, and, uh, and it's just br heavy brush all around me. So be alligators anyway and I'm just in a little uh, PVC tiny uh, you know dinghy so anyway I'm rowing and I'm rowing backwards and I'm trying to look where the boat is and you know I'm thinking through my head uh, what am I gonna do when the alligator pops up you know and I'm, I'm gonna hit him with the oar or whatever you know I row across there and I get to the boat and I reach out to grab the boat and you know how dinghies are they they move any slight movement in the boat and they move real fast these uh you know air dinghies so as i reach out to grab the back of the boat the boat moves and as soon as it moves i have to um, rebalance myself and i'd set my food in kind of the the v area of the boat you know i'm not falling in this water but so i re-step to balance myself and just step right on my food so uh, now I've smashed my food, but I don't care. I want out of this boat. So I throw my coke up there uh, Climb up on the boat and then reach in there and grab my food and um, You know what's left of it. And I enjoy that coke, but the food was uh, I had a few fries, but that's about it but um, The next day, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly calling as I'm traveling trying to find places open I find I found one place that was open it, but they were going to close at three o'clock. I could have got fuel there. And I could have got fuel uh, food there but um, They were they were closed when I got there at four and then uh, so You know, I've got just a tiny bit of snacks and stuff. I've got plenty of water Anchored another place the next day. I got to this place that was uh, was four fueling large tugboats and um I'm out of fuel so you know this guy's gonna have to give me some fuel one way or another so I anchor there the next morning the guy's there at seven o'clock in the morning and I'm just telling him you know I'm pretty much here I need some fuel there's there's not a city for miles there's no civilization through the entire swamp you know after a little bit of talking to the guy so uh, we got some diesel fuel that I use to put in my forklift uh, it's not much but um, you know I can pump you out some of that so he pumped me out about 15 gallons I was able to get fuel but that was it you know I was on crackers and water the last few days had some uh, Ritz crackers uh, I ate that for two days and uh, you know, had plenty of water but that was it I wasn't starving but you know it's a lesson learned if you're planning a trip from uh, from anywhere near New Orleans or Louisiana whether it's offshore or through the ICW I don't know that I don't know if you should plan on making stops you should be prepared to go from Galveston to Mobile have all the fuel you need all the food you need all the water you need you know because there's nothing but a few anchorages 
along the way, you know, wherever you can find safe to anchor because those tugboats are rolling through there. Um, and another thing about traveling at night, I tried that and um, it's really tough because the tugboat, it's narrow anyway, but the tugboat's coming and um, when I was in open water, I would see a lot of them. And you just have a little light on the front and then you have this large distance between the light in the front and a little light in the back. So you don't know if it's two small boats or if it's one giant boat, you, you have no idea. And I almost made the mistake of, of passing in front of it because I, didn't, I couldn't tell which direction it was going. Uh, that was the night before I got into uh, New Orleans. Um, I traveled about three hours a night. Um, but luckily I had a spotlight, I was shining and he turned his big lights on. I was able to see that I was just about to pass right in front of a giant tugboat. Uh, you can see the little lights, like I said, but you can't, it's very difficult to tell which direction they're traveling until you come really uh, experienced around what those lights are. And, and now I know if I see the little orange light, I know that's the very front. Or if I see only a red light and there's another light, you know, 100 yards away, then that's the back of the boat. Without that experience, it's, uh, it's pretty dangerous. Next week, or in the next video, I should say, be back on the uh, San Juan 24 so that um, I can get that done and then get back on this boat get the mast down or get it out of the water get the mast down and uh, get started on this so anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video